having financial independence allows you that choice, right? There's a lot of women, um, and this is why I, I do this, you know, are in abusive relationships and are scared to leave because of money. And, mm -hmm. and financial abuse is real. Um, leaving abusive jobs, it allows you- <laughs> Hello, that leaving abusive jobs? I don't know anything about that. <laughs> People are like, why didn't you quit if it was so bad? I go, I couldn't. <laughs> I had a family that depended on me. Of course I had to take it. All right, friends, we are back. Part two of our financial health conversation with Nicole Lappin, New York Times bestselling author and uh, TV anchor on CNN, CNBC, Bloomberg. So we are talking all about all of the cool ways to help set up your new child for success. Um, also, we're talking about IRAs and how you need to be making sure that your retirement money is making money within those accounts, because sometimes you make these, um, your kind of max contributions to these accounts, which I know I do, but then is that money being invested? I don't remember for myself, so I'm gonna have to look that up, but she's got a lot of really great tips and we're really going to dive into kind of some of the the traumas behind money, um, how to overcome them. She's really had a lot of money traumas. And so she can really speak that language and, and how to, to really look at this as self care. And I hope you enjoy. I'd love to, yeah. to segue into how to make our kids rich. <laughs> totally, and I'll just say on the uh, on the compounding, Einstein said it's the eighth wonder of the world. Warren Buffett himself put this in his will for his own wife, by the way, to do out of all, like one of the greatest investors of our time, um, said put a majority of our money into low cost S&P 500 index funds. And so I, I think that, you know, if you're just starting out, it's a, it's a really good rubric to follow and we spend so much time doing so much other stuff. I think there was a study showing like we spend 40 hours a year researching new boots, but like a f few oh minutes God. on your finances. Isn't right? that crazy? Just take it's the true. same amount of time as like you're planning a party or a trip or something, but use that to read a book or to listen to a podcast or to educate yourself or to get in there because oftentimes we suffer more in imagination than in reality. This is stoicism you talk about it on the show. Like. Mm -hmm. I I didn't open my credit reports for so long or did my taxes because I thought like, oh my God, I'm going to jail. Like we think that all these terrible things are gonna happen, but when we actually confront it, it's a lot easier. So let's make your daughter a millionaire. Yes, um, before we get to that, um, we are on the go a lot. I don't know if you have a favorite snack, but mine are wonderful pistachios and i don't know if you've tried them have you tried them delicious okay well i have but stocks i like the ones that are not shelled because yeah we're we like the not shelled because it's easier but sometimes the shells are fun i'm just scared as i get older breaking my teeth um so i'm kind of like ah the not shelled might be better for me but um it slows you down too so you're not yeah. just like shoveling. i know and i love they're so good because i can keep them in my bag i travel with them um and Kevin used to buy them all the time when we traveled. And then I was like, oh, these are really yummy. And now they have so many great flavors. Mine is mm. sweet chili, that's my favorite. But guys, they're one of the highest protein nuts. Each one ounce serving has six grams of protein. It gives you 10% of your daily value, so no downside. Um, and they don't melt, so they're really good to just keep on hand in your car, they're everywhere. Um, you can visit www www.wonderfulpistachios.com to learn more and stock up on your favorite flavors today. And with that, Athena will hopefully be able to buy wonderful pistachios for the rest of her life because we started a certain account that you're gonna hear from Nicole on now. You guys started a 529 mm -hmm. or a custodial Roth IRA. Or both? I think we did both. I'll look while you're telling us what okay. they are. So custodial Roth IRA is awesome. You have to make sure that your daughter is making money and then putting that money into a Roth IRA. She'll have millions of dollars um, the earlier you start. You can also start accumulating credit for her. It depends on the bank, so you want to make sure but um, that they're reporting that credit. but adding her as an authorized user. Ooh, onto your credit cards. Yeah. I forgot, I don't think I've done that yet. Well, how old is she, Bria? She's <laughs> eight months old. Credit Dad, card. What have you been doing? I know, right? <laughs> Just enjoying her. 
<laughs> Custodial Roth IRA is is the one for kids. Uh, 529 is is used for college it can be used for other things if they don't go to college too but qualifying expenses and so that's another tax advantage to count but you don't also remember like some parents struggle between investing in their kids college and their own retirement and i often say you know please put your oxygen mask on first yeah even before helping your kids like there's financing well, they have to for find college. their way too we all have to find our way well then yeah. And college might not even be a thing when they get to college. Totally. I don't know if Athena's going to go to college. I don't think it's going to be a thing. Like, I, think I, of how technology is about to speed up with AI. Like, how much it already has. And think about, like, I don't know. I just, I, I don't think it's going to be a thing. But that's just just my thoughts. But you're, you're safeguarding if it is. Like, yeah. you're, you're well, taking the advantage 529, of the... Sorry, the 529 account you can use for education, but you can also use it for other things that mm -hmm. are education based. Like yeah. if she didn't go to college and she wanted to study abroad or something, like there's ways you can use that money otherwise, right? Yeah, so other qualifying expenses, and who knows, sister, by the time Athena is, you know, in her late teens, uh, you know, there could be other roles. She could take it out for, you know, starting a company. Who knows? Like yeah. what's going to happen by then? Um, but they're but they're tax advantage, so they're growing tax free. Um, and with all these accounts, too, even when you're thinking about retirement, you know, you don't want to show up on your kid's couch because you can't afford retirement. Like that's not helping them. And I know it comes from a good place. From yeah, you're, you you want to take care of your kiddo, um, but not not showing up on their couch or like having them take care of you, it, that's not helping your kid either. So make sure that you're taken care of first. Mm -hmm. And the more the merrier when it comes to retirement accounts. One big misconception is like you put a ring on a 401k and that's it, but you can have a 401k and a Roth IRA and a traditional IRA and a SEP and a simple. There's so many different retirement vehicles too. And they're tax advantaged uh, just like a 529 plan is. So I feel like also you can take it out for homeschooling. Like there's, I think it was like, there were a variety of things you could do with it. Um, I have been seeing the credit card thing, adding them on as an authorized user so that they can get credit. Mm -hmm. Of course, the key thing is not to fuck up the credit yeah. <laughs> so that they don't end up with screwed up credit. Um, and yes, the, please, only do that if you're gonna pay your bills on And explain the custodial Roth IRA a little deeper. So the, the so first, what is a Roth IRA? So there's traditional IRA and a Roth IRA, and the only difference is taxes. So with a Roth IRA, you're paying taxes now, so you don't pay taxes later. With a traditional IRA, it's taxed the same way as a 401k. So you're going to pay taxes when you take that money out. So it's really important to remember, like even though you see a big gigundo number, like you're gonna pay taxes on that money, so be prepared. Um, you're not gonna get all of that money that you see in there. But having diversification with tax treatments is really helpful. Um, and so with a Roth IRA, you're paying taxes now, so you don't pay taxes later. Is there one that's better than the other? Because are the taxes now maybe better than they're gonna be in the future? You don't know, it right? Depends. You might also have, you know, you might own your house by then, or you might either make more money or you may make less money. So you might be in a different tax bracket. So it really depends yeah. on having like, a diversity of them. Well, well, also, if you took the money you would have paid taxes on and invested that, that's kind of usually a thing that people do, right? They're like, instead of paying taxes now, I'll invest that money. Um, or for example, when I switched over my mortgages to interest only, I took that money and invested it rather than giving it to the bank. Well, you'll want to do, you know, a comparison of the interest rates. So like when we talked about earlier, uh, if you had $1,000 uh, and you had 20% credit card debt, like you want to compare 20% versus eight to 10%, right? Like that's an obvious answer. But if you have a mortgage that's 4% and you can invest in bonds that are 5%, like you just want to make sure it, it's truly just whatever interest rate is the highest. Mm -hmm. um, and so sometimes you can like arbitrage it, which just means taking advantage of what those interest rates are. Um, but yeah, making sure that like if, if, mortgages are rock bottom, taking that money and investing it, which it sounds like is what you did, mm -hmm. versus, pay, versus paying off your mortgage, mm -hmm. right? You're making more money by using that money to grow for you, Yeah, is essentially the argument behind that. But the custodial Roth IRA is where you can open up for kids. And that's tax-free. You need to pay her. So 
you like pay your company. her you pay her as an employee mm-hmm. how does that make that make sense to someone in the heel squad because i remember seeing an instagram video that went viral about how jay-z and beyonce pay their daughter like a billion dollars a year and she like hummed on an album or something how does athena we'll use her as an example how does she work for me she could be in your photo shoots um you could use her for marketing materials you could um, I mean, at this point, that's probably like for you and what yeah. your business is. That's the ex- extent of it. But yes, Blue Ivy, like there were all of that, those videos. You saw that, right? For sure. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, listen, she's in the heel squad. She she modeled her little shirt um, in a magazine. <laughs> See? Um, and so. So she's working. She's modeling. Yeah. Ren's in the family. Yeah. The problem is I don't want to show her face anymore. I did that in the very beginning. It doesn't. That's but, not required but, to pay her. Yeah. You can show her a cute bum. Yeah. She's got really chubby little thighs. I love those. Oh, my God. I am eating every ounce of her. Baby thighs. Um, she, right now, she's getting ticklish in her armpits. So I, like, am, you know, going in there and so oh, biting them. Delicious. Um what else can you do for your children to help set them up? The biggest thing, Maria, is being a good example. And so when people ask me, yes, there's a lot of little things you can do around teaching them interest if they're borrowing money from you, you know, as she gets older, or having her negotiate for her allowance, mm-hmm. like you're creating a little entrepreneur. And so you can have sort of a sliding scale and say, no, mama, I you know, I did this and I deserve whatever. And so you're teaching like some of these skills. But the biggest thing that I I tell parents is like, you want financially illiterate kids. Are you financially illiterate? Like look in the mirror first because they're watching everything you're doing. And like, if you're worried, if you're anxious about money, they feel that. Mm -hmm. The way you talk about money, the way you talk about money to yourself, the way you talk about money to them, your habits, like they're watching you. So the best thing you can do to raise financially responsible kiddos is being financially responsible yourself so probably great for them to see a thousand amazon boxes coming in every day right (laughs) (laughs) kevin (laughs) kevin can you hear me honey hello hello are you there um yeah i think that's that's a really really good thing but i think those three things the the custodial roth ra the 529 account and then the um adding them as an authorized user to the credit card are really really great tips to to get them started off right um and for us i think it really is i think for a lot of people just starting off with a fiduciary and just starting to to find that disposable income i one time one year i was like getting so frustrated and I had business managers too. And I'm like, I kept telling them, put this money aside. And, and you know, they have a thousand clients, whatever, it wasn't happening. And I was like frustrated. So I was like, that's it. And I hid it from Kevin. I set up a separate account and anything over my paycheck went into that account. Any extra jobs I did. So mm-hmm. if Heel Squad, you guys have any side hustles. I took my side hustle money and I put it away and I pretty much paid off the house at that point. Mm-hmm. Um, and saved an extraordinary amount in one year and then just surprised Kevin at the end. and was like, look, (laughs) here we go, because I'm really good at saving. And that's why I was saying, I think mentally it might be helpful if if on the app we were set up and we could just say, you know what? No, I'm not gonna buy that Tiffany's bracelet. Instead, I'm gonna put it into the S&P. And every time you do that, you learn to get high off of that movement because you're investing in your future and your security and as you said, we have to just have balls and just watch it fluctuate. Don't even look at it. You're really not supposed to look at it. Just kind of let it do its thing because it it will even out. Um, I just in the greatest crisis of all time, you know, had a little panic moment. It's like but. stuff was on sale. You know, we love a good deal, yeah. right? And so when when the stock market goes down, think of it as being on sale. Yeah, and that's when you need to definitely S- not buy the Tiffany's bracelet. But it's it's counter to what your instinct is, right? Like when stuff is in the pooper, you're like, get me out of here, this is the worst. Mm -hmm. It's actually the opposite is what you should be doing, but it's so hard. And when things are flying high, you're like, oh my God, this is amazing, it's always gonna stay high, I might as well buy more. And so it's the opposite, it's fighting against those instincts, but it's really starting that muscle memory, you know, the neurons that 
wire together, fire together yeah. idea, like starting these routines. And I'm so happy that you're including financial wellness into an overall routine of wellness because it is. And like when mm -hmm. we think about self-care, listen, I love a good like deep tissue massage as much as the next girl or a contrast therapy or everything, right? But figuring out your accounts, mm -hmm. figuring out whether your Roth or your you know, whatever is in your IRA is invested, like that's self-care. It really is. It's not fun and sexy, and it's like not a thing that, you know, viral TikToks are made of, but I totally believe that's self-care. So if we can reframe that and say like, this is taking care of yourself. Yep. It, Cause it is fear. And by the way, that fear and that anxiety does have physical ramifications. You know, I've, I've so been many. on- So many. All the doctor shows talking about like the physical issues that you can have, like the vertigo, the pain, the, you know, the chronic stress and anxiety that comes with financial trauma that's unresolved. Mm -hmm. It's just like anything else, like any other wellness routine that you have applies to finances too. So the work that you've done like on your own mental health, have you have you looked at the financial aspect of that? The, the routine that you're getting into with your supplements and all of like your amazing, wonderful health habits, like are we getting into a routine around our financial wellness so that doesn't get out of control? Yeah, no, I think it's so important. I, financial health is part of your overall healthcare program because, you know, money is important and it gives you the freedom then if something happens to be able to take care of yourself. Like when my mom got sick, I didn't have to really worry because I had everything lined up um, and I had done the hard work of reading a 600 friggin' page book. Thank you, Tony Robbins. Um, and bringing on AJ as a fiduciary and helping me kind of figure out what are we going to do so that long term we're covered. And so I think your your financial health is your health. And, um, and I think that today, hopefully people will be inspired to take an action, um, whether it's checking your 401k to make sure that that lump sum is being invested mm -hmm. properly or your SEPs or your IRAs or whatever. Um, if you have a new baby, um, setting up some of these accounts that we talked about so that they're set up and you can teach them about it as they grow up. And then for you, yeah, getting into the S&P and just dip your toe in and, and start adding, you know, whenever you get a little extra, a little mm -hmm. extra comes in from your side hustle, throw it in. That'll all keep compounding. And treat yourself too. There's a spectrum, right? Like it's somewhere between I'm gonna live forever and I'm gonna die tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And so it's not healthy to spend all of your money out of control, but it's also not healthy to hoard it yeah. and to, to not treat yourself and not to enjoy the fruits of your labor. Yeah. And so I think that you know having financial independence allows you that choice, right? There's a lot of women, um, and this is why I, I do this, you know, are in abusive relationships and are scared to leave because of money. And, mm -hmm. and financial abuse is real. Um, leaving abusive jobs, it allows you- <laughs> Hello, that leaving abusive jobs? I don't know anything about that. <laughs> People are like, why didn't you quit if it was so bad? I go, I couldn't. <laughs> I had a family that depended on me. Of course I had to take it. Yeah, but imagine, you know, and as you were going through everything with your mom, like you didn't have that financial stress too on top of everything else that was stressful enough. Mm -hmm. And so th this is one part we can, we have some control over if we take it. Like we, we can only go after it though if we if we grab for it. Yeah. And so the, the other, you know, health stuff is, is often beyond our control. There's stuff we can do prophylactically and proactively, but you know, this is something that is well within your reach. But again, only if you grab for it. Yeah. Yeah. We have to, we have to just do it. So guys set up the time, put it in your calendar, make it an appointment that you are going to focus on this. And, and once you get in, you'll, like I said, you're going to get high when you see your money making money and you don't have to actually do anything, but yeah, you know, it's set like this the up. oldest school mailbox money, right? When when you say seven streams of income is what the average mil millionaire has, this is one stream of income: interest payments, dividend payments. Dividend payments are basically like little gifts that stocks mm -hmm. can give you too. So that's income producing, um, and yeah, in addition to whatever else you might have, but. But those are what any millionaire has, is, is those streams of income that are coming to them from interest. And it's really not how much you make, it's how much you keep that matters most. And, and ultimately, 
your base salary is never going to grow real long-term wealth, generational wealth. It's what you're doing with, with that money it. and how you're putting that money to work. Because even if you get higher and higher salaries, and you probably experience this, there's lifestyle creep. Yeah. So like the nice to haves or the need to haves as you as you get more and more money, oftentimes people are like less wealthy yeah. or have lower net worth overall because they take on more responsibilities and more liabilities. Yeah. Well, that's where I think sometimes like we forget that things are relative. Mm -hmm. And so even if you're not making a million dollars a year, the person who's making a million dollars a year and you're making, you know, 75 or whatever, the amount that you can save that is a similar percentage because mm -hmm. their bills are up here too. Totally. We're all living close to what our income is usually. Yeah, and it's not living within your means, it's living below your means. And so when you hear that a lot, like living within your means means spending everything that you mm -hmm. have coming in. Living below your means and you can. Yeah, we did it for a long, long, yeah. long, long time. But that's where, like I said, I had to balance it and I wasn't balanced at all. I wouldn't even buy a bottle of water because I was like, I can get that at home for free. I'll just wait till I get home. And Kevin's like, you sick puppy, pull over at 7-Eleven and get yourself some water. Um, but- We um, all need a Kevin. Yeah. But you know, I think, you know, you learn and you you realize that you do have to enjoy the fruits of your labor too. But we we also have to- keep things in perspective in a time where Instagram is so popular and all you're seeing all day is what you don't have mm -hmm. and what everybody else has. And God, those Amazon queens, <laughs> every Amazon queen out there, it's like, oh my God, I need that now, I need that now. Oh my God, I need that cutting board too. And I need that. And this so- This tweaky, that one. So if you're going to start on this saving program, get off Instagram because they're just gonna show you everything you don't have. But truly like a Kevin or whoever it is, like a, an accountability buddy in the same way as that helps you with fitness, it helps you with finance too. Like I wish we just talked about it more and I'm so glad that you're doing this show. Uh, you know, we'll talk about everything at the dinner table with girlfriends before we talk about money, sexy time, bowel movements, bikini waxes, like totally no everything. problem. And you're then right. I'm like, hey, what are you making this year? Or like, what are you saving? And it's crickets. And I'm like, girl, you just told me about your landing strip and this is crickets. Like, Isn't that you, funny? What do you mean? You're like, right. I wanna help you. I'm only here to help you. And so I think the more transparent we are, the better. And if you wanna talk about money, go first. And so in my books, I talked about all of my salaries that I made everywhere. I talked about the advances that I got from my books because I would say if I was reading this book and I'm hearing like, talk about your money, like what is this bitch making for this yeah. book? Yeah, and yeah, so yeah. I'm like, I don't care. At this point, I'll go first. But with any hard thing, like if you talk about addiction in your family, as soon as you open up about it, like yeah. you give license to the other person to do the same. And so having that accountability buddy, whether it's a spouse or a best friend or something about, like that, you know, will keep you more on track. If somebody showed up at your door with running shoes, like you're more likely to go run. And so talking about this, like celebrating, we should get more in the habit. Like why can't we have more viral videos instead, you know, of gender reveals, which are amazing, or like other celebrations, right? Getting out of debt, like let's celebrate. I know. Let's celebrate all these other things. And so I think it's the last taboo we have in society, maybe mental health, maybe fertility stuff, but I think money truly is, you know, is so scary for so many reasons. Yeah. And the only way to combat that is to address it. Well, also there's a whole stigma about um, money in general, right? Mm -hmm. um, people, people fear it a lot. And then if you like it, it's bad. I love money. And my husband laughs, he's like, I go, I don't care about like being on TV, I want the money. You and me both. I want to make sure me and my family are secure and safe. That's all I care about. Um, and probably, again, it goes back to the roots of traumas mm -hmm. where that's all that matters at the end of the day is that you can put food on the table and you can keep a roof over your head. To me, that's the most important thing. Other people, fame is their most important thing. That never totally. was my thing. It never mattered to me. It was fun. I enjoyed it. But for me, it's, it's how do I make money? It's a, it's a hierarchy of needs too, right? Like, you know, the idea that you're able to take care of your family, you know, support your family, um, you know, understanding that that's where your value is, that's what you're optimizing for. That keeps you grounded when you see social media posts of like somebody having a yacht. All, all of a sudden you might feel 
Like, I want a yacht too, I'm not doing anything with my life. Well, it's going back to what is your value. Yeah. Maybe you value a yacht, or maybe that's on your goal list. But if that's not, then it's about getting really, really clear with what that looks like for you and only you. So if you're like, I wanna sit in a lawn chair from Target, but like have my house fully paid off, then like go back to that because I think we can have it all, but only if we decide and define what it all means and stop consistently changing the goalpost on ourselves and being really clear about about what we're asking for because when people will say to me Nicole I just want a million dollars it's like cool cool what are you gonna do with that million dollars yeah maybe you need more than a million dollars I don't know maybe you need less than a million dollars I think it's about figuring out the life you want first really truly without anybody watching it doesn't matter mm -hmm. like you can say fame it's it's like only you you only have to wake up in your life but figure out the life you want and then reverse engineer to figure out how to get the money to live that life and not the yeah. other way around. It's like, you know, if we jumped in an Uber and I was like, hey, Maria, we're going to a party in LA. And you're like, okay, where's the party? What am I wearing? Are there snacks? Like, I have questions Details. about this party. Yeah. You should have the same questions, if not more about your financial life and your goals. Yeah, well, I think also like, like I'm saying I, I, I oh, that's what I care about, but I, I also think that people need to understand that there is also, there can be integrity within that. And I think that people think that there is an integrity with that. So for example, for me, um, I had a conversation with my friend Marie Forleo, who's, um, who has this program called B-School. And we were talking when I was transitioning and she was like, well, how much money do you wanna make? I'm like, I don't, and, and I know this sounds a little contradictory, I don't care either about money, I just wanna make sure I can pay my bills. That's like my big thing, is I wanna be able to pay my bills and be and be secure so that my family's safe. That's all I cared about. It wasn't that I wanted yachts and planes and all that. I can manifest rides, that's fun and that's easy. And I did, once I started focusing on it, I was like, oh, okay, here it comes. But um, for me, it's, it's I wanna make sure that we're safe. And I abundance isn't necessarily my goal. Mm -hmm. It's it's the safety. It's making sure I can make money to provide and take care of everybody. Um, and so she was like, "Oh, that's all you want?" And I was like, "Yeah, I don't really need much more than that as long as you know we can pay the bills and we're good." So, so you can also love money and want money and all of that, but and then how you make it too. So. I have to say no to a lot of things. Mm -hmm. My integrity line is very, very high. Mm -hmm. So I have to say no to things that I don't believe in, sponsors I don't agree with, things I would never use or eat. And so even though, again, I want security, my security comes from saying no because I know that mm -hmm. ultimately the right things do flow in. Yeah. And what does security and safety look like? Have you defined that? Yeah, it's being able to, to maintain the life that we have and pay whatever bills we have and yeah, yeah. Feel, feel like I can in a moment jump in and take care of a sick parent and pay whatever alternative treatment I have to pay for or whatever, making sure that there's cushion there for those needs. I mean, look, money is a mind, you know what? I don't know if we say that here, but whether you have it or you don't, it's a mind F, right? And so whether you're poor, it's some sort of issue if you have money you don't want to flaunt it like it's it's an mm -hmm. issue regardless on all sides of the spectrum yeah so i would say just remember that so and it's more fun to have money <laughs> more choice <laughs> but again to the beginning of this conversation it is freedom and it's the meaning that you assign to it yeah again money without meaning is just paper or the numbers in your banking portal yeah exactly all right well nicole thank you so much for for coming in and chatting you guys can get any one of her books rich bitch i love it miss independent and boss bitch boss was your first one right rich bitch and then boss bitch miss okay. independent and then but oh no becoming superwoman which i don't have and then the superwoman journal and then i don't know all the books i love all the colors thank you you remind me of that actress here what's that actress oh, oh, she's I'm not good at this game Oh, I can't remember her name right now. But um, anyhow, um, I love that you you didn't buy the bracelet and you went and invested in Tiffany stock. That's my favorite moment today. Um, and then, yeah, and then I was so tired of talking about how we don't learn this stuff in school. I also created the Money School, um, which will be a book next year of just everything that, you know, I would, again, I wish we 
learn this stuff in school. I wish I had a pony. Like, I wish all these things. It doesn't matter. Like, it didn't happen. And so it's that forgiveness, but also saying, okay, now I have the resources and, and I'm able to take control. Yeah. And what did you say? You're never as young as you are today. So never. I like that too. That's inspiring. All right, Hill Squad, let us know how much money you make. We're excited. <laughs> um, and in the meantime, be nice people, make good choices, and be present. This podcast and all related content published or distributed by or on behalf of Maria Menunos or MariaMenunos.com is for informational purposes only and may include information that is general in nature and that is not specific to you. Any information or opinions expressed or contained herein are not intended to serve as or replace medical advice, nor to diagnose, prescribe, or treat any disease, condition, illness, or injury, and you should consult the healthcare professional of your choice regarding all matters concerning your health, including before beginning any exercise, weight loss, or healthcare care program. If you have or suspect you may have a healthcare emergency, please contact a qualified healthcare professional for treatment. Any information or opinions provided by a guest expert or host featured within website or on company's podcast are their own, not those of Maria Menounos or the company. Accordingly, Maria Menounos and the company cannot be responsible for any results or consequences or actions you may take based on information or opinions.